deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When All my heart to him I give, ever to him I'll cling. In his blessed presence live, ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, Merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to Him belong. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted Nothing else could help. Love lifted me. You know, I love that line in that song, third verse, it says, Jesus completely saves. Don't you like the word complete? Completely saves. 
Psalms 100. Would you share it with me? Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever. And his faithfulness continues to each generation. I love that promise, don't you? His faithfulness continues to each generation. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Amen. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Fill my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Ooh, he conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And we can be completely saved in him. Oh, I love it, the word complete. Oh, Jesus, you conquered the grave. You conquered the grave. And you said if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in us, that it will quicken our mortal bodies, Lord. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, shine your light. Shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen king jesus shine your light and 
let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And Jesus is the center of my life. In him, we live and move and have our being. We are alive forever. We shall live and not die and proclaim what the Lord has done. Jesus knew me while I was in my mother's womb. Therefore, I will strive to achieve his purpose every day of my life. My life nor my family will fall apart because Jesus holds us together. Jesus is the center of my life. And the gospel of Jesus says Jesus was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless, spotless life. He died on the cross to save us from our sins. He arose from the dead and he's coming again. Amen. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. My God is awesome, he can move the mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, he can move mountains, keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heals me when I'm broken, strength when I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes I'm healed. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living, praise his holy name. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, 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 
urgency that we need to intercede I don't know how many of you follow Mitch Marsh on Facebook but that hurricane that missed us and went to Mexico is coming in to Nicaragua right now and he asked for an urgent prayer for them because most of them do not have housing which is one of the reasons why we're trying to help them a lot of them just live in the jungles they don't have a home the lean twos they don't have a home and when we're talking about flooding there's no place to go but also our state is in a huge state of crisis 
flooding still happening in the middle because the St. John's River is rising. And God's heart is as sad as ours. That is not his plan for us. So let's join our hearts together, our spirits together. One could put a thousand, two, ten thousand. How many could we put to flight? Because you and I both know in a time of crisis, one of the biggest voices in the time of crisis is the devil. They send depression, they send anger, they send bitterness, even the spirit of looting. All of these things come in a crisis. We have a crisis in this county of murder and accidents that's just unbelievable. It's not normal. So let's agree together. Father God, you have made my heart stirred with an urgency. And I just ask in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power and authority of the blood and the name, that you step into our situations, into these crises, that you cause that wind to cease over Nicaragua, that flooding will not take over Nicaragua. It's already a jungle area where they're talking about. And Lord, I just thank you that your hand is mighty and you can cause the ceiling of that jungle to protect them from storms and rains. I ask you, Father God, to intervene in their behalf, to especially those that know your name, your children there, Lord God, those that know your name, the pastor that Mitch mentioned. We ask you, Father, to step in for his family. Protect that whole church in the name of Jesus. We we agree with him for protection over that whole community and those that they minister to all over that direction. There's rivers that overflow. And Father, we ask for your mercy to be seen, that your salvation be released, that your protection and defense come on behalf of these people. And we lift up our great state, the state of Florida, and all of the crisis that this state is in, and even our county, the crisis. You are the God of the crisis. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us. You said you would provide everything we need. So we stand on your word. We stand on your word that you will step into these situations and you will bring about miracle after miracle after miracle. Supernatural actions. Angels coming and ministering with people. Things that should not be easy to lift will be easy to lift. Homes will be restored. Things that should have been destroyed will not be destroyed. God, we thank you for coming in. We ask that the St. John's River stop flowing out, that it not keep rising in the name of Jesus. We ask you to put a stop to it right now in the name of Jesus. And that those that are in the paths of all of these things will be able to find housing. We come against the housing crisis. The greed that's over this state, over housing, is the name of Jesus. We pull down that power. We say to you, cease and desist. And we thank you for provision being made for every person who is homeless right now. We thank you, Father God, that the people in the state of Florida will rise up and stick together and we will overcome these crises. And we give you praise and honor and glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. Oh, he'll do it again. 
He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. It seems that there's no way out and you're going under. But God's proven time and time again, he'll take care of you. He'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. God knows the things you're going through, and he knows how you're hurting. He knows just how your heart has been broken in two. But he's the God of the stars, of the sun and the sea, and he is your father. He can calm the storm and he'll find some way to fix it for you. Oh, he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you've been. Hasn't he always come through for you? He's the same now as then. You may not know how, you may not know when, you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again, he'll do it again. Give him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, O God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone every breath that i take every moment i'm awake have your way in me lord i give you my heart i give you my soul i live for you alone every breath that i take Every moment I'm awake, have your way in me. Have your way in me. Horrible, 
This is my desire. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. You've ministered to us through these songs and blessed our hearts and our lives today. We give you praise. We honor you. We give you. you praise. Yes, we do. Thank you that your presence you is here praise. to continue with us. Yes. So we look into your word today. May it speak to us, bring comfort and wisdom and understanding as well as joy and rejoicing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I would like to say we appreciate so much Brian and Rhonda Tillman being here last Sunday. Uh, we were not here. We were enjoying ourselves with five wonderful young men and one dad of those, two of those young men. And it was a beautiful day. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. We enjoyed it so much, we think we want to do it again. Uh, isn't this a beautiful sight, folks? It is just beautiful. I saw, I saw Brother West go back, and he came back out, and I thought, did, did they kick him out of children's church? <laughs> Kicked you out, Wes. Oh, my. Yes, yes. Brian Abbott is, um, well... When we first moved to Leesburg, however many years ago it was, Brian came into our life then, and uh, he has been in it ever since. He is a music guy, and most of you know that our younger son is also a music guy, so they just hit it off right to start with. I want to start today with um, talking about... Um, well, first of all, my setting for today is in Acts chapter 3 and chapter 4, where the story of the lame man is. We talked about that already. But on over in chapter 4, the apostles experienced some, what I'll call, fallout from the miracle. Do you remember when we were kids growing up and... The missile threat in Cuba was there and people built fallout shelters and 
they would practice going into them, you know, so they would be able to get there. And probably if a nuclear bomb had been sent over to us, we wouldn't have had a few seconds to think about what was happening. But fallout in life is real. Sometimes it's toxic. It is just harmful to us. And I, I want to use that word toxic as well. And I, I, just, I just think sometimes, wouldn't, wouldn't life in the Lord and Jesus be so much easier to live out our faith, so much more wonderful and satisfying if we didn't have all the complications that go along with that? This is played out before us in the text in Acts, Acts chapters 3 and 4. Peter and John, as we know, had spoken healing in the name of Jesus Christ to the man who had been crippled from birth. He was miraculously healed. Born that way. Lived that way all his life to that point. Don't know how old he was. Just know he was a man. And God miraculously healed him in that instant of time. To prove it, he stood up. He began to walk, and that wasn't all. He began to jump up and down. Say, well, what was he so excited about? If you had never walked in your life, you might be excited too. He began to give praise to God as well. And then he followed right after Peter and John into the temple. Now the people inside the temple saw it. They knew this was the guy that they had just passed that morning coming into the temple. Begging for life support from them. They knew him because he had been doing that all of his life ever since he was old enough to do anything. It was all he could do. He couldn't do anything else. But Peter and John got arrested for this man being healed. They got arrested. Think we would pray for healings if something like that happened today? I would say yes, we probably would. There is, there is today a certain toxicity or fallout toward people of faith, in particular toward churches that believe and practice faith according to the Scriptures. There, there is a toxicity toward us. There, last year, last year really is when it began with the COVID, vac COVID, whatever. They asked churches to shut down. And not to meet. Some churches didn't do that. We did for a few weeks. But what I have learned since then in listening to other pastors, they reacted to that and said, no, we can't shut down. People need God more than ever now. The, the atmosphere in our country today still tolerates church and Christian faith, but only to a certain point. There is a toxicity in our society toward it, even these days. Well, it was no different here. When the Holy Spirit came, there was a, a vibrancy, there was an aliveness, there was an expectancy that had not been before. And in chapter 3, as, as Peter and John are going to the temple, they heal the lame man. 
And he jumps up, runs, leaps, hollers, yells, screams. I don't know what all he did. And more. (laughs) But it called attention to himself and to Peter and John and the temple police. The the temple police. Say, how do you know that, Pastor? Because I, I read my study Bible. The temple police came wanting to know what's all the uproar about. And when they realized what happened, they laid hold, the Bible says, of Peter and John and put them in jail. In jail. The next day they bring them out and they talk to them and they say to them, you... By what power? By what name? By what authority did you do this? See, most of those people knew about Jesus because they were the ones who crucified Him. They were the ones who took His life. They knew about Him. It was that same crowd that showed up and tried to counter the miracle of healing that the lame man claimed. In verse 7, they asked Peter and John, by what power or by what name have you done this? Whose name? His name. We get a sense of what is about to happen from the first four verses of Acts Chapter 3, Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man laid there at the gate, and they entered the gate, and when he saw Peter and John about to go in, he asked them for help, for alms or money. And Peter and John looked at him, and Peter said, Look at us. Look at us. He wasn't saying to the man, we don't have anything to give you. He was saying to the man, look at us. Look at us. The great need this man had was not money. He was receiving money all his life and was no better off physically because of it. His great need was for a healing, saving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that could bring him Freedom both spiritually and physically. Enter Peter and John with a fresh word from the upper room and a powerful faith that connected with the real need that this man had. Without fear, Simon Peter spoke these words to him and took this action. In in verse... In this verse it says, Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have I give to you. In the name, everybody say in the name. In the name name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Then in verse 7, it says, He took him by the right hand, and lifted him up, and immediately, I mean sooner than later, immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. And everybody saw him. And they knew it was him who had been begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were wondering, what has happened to him? What has happened to him? The rest of the chapter there contains Peter's sermon to the onlookers about Jesus' ministry among them and his death, his burial and resurrection. Peter was a real preacher. He wasn't going to pass up an opportunity to share the gospel of saving grace. And he did. 
while they were preaching to the people in chapter 4, verse 1, the religious crowd got convicted and didn't like it. Wouldn't you know it? (laughs) Peter and John were preaching resurrection from the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That upset the religious crowd. Why? Because they had killed him. They hung him on a cross to die, and he died and was placed in the grave. But the power of God brought him forth again. And now they're preaching in his name. It upset the religious crowd. They had him thrown in jail. But here's the good thing. Thousands of people believed their message. A a, uh, mega church was born right then. It says the men alone were about 5,000. That doesn't include all the women and children. It could have been a church of 15,000 people. That would only be one kid per household. Thousands of people believed the message. And their lives were changed. Where did this authority come from? Where did it come from? The question was asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? We get a clue in verse 8 when it says, Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you there is power in the Holy Ghost. There is power in the heart and life of that person who has received that gift. Power to do the work of the gospel. That power of the Holy Spirit brings it to us. Jesus, the stone, Peter said, which you builders rejected. The very thing that you needed to find yourself, to get your feet under you, to be able to do what you needed to do, You rejected Him. You wouldn't have anything to do with Him. You crucified Him as a matter of fact. You thought it was over and done. The deal was finished. But God on the third day raised Him from the grave. You didn't hear what I said. God raised Him up on the third day. And He appeared in our presence. We saw Him. We witnessed to Him of His power and grace and His aliveness. And then He said to this group of religious people, there is no salvation in any other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. No salvation in any other. You can go to church all your life, even pay your tithe, even be kind and serve at the door as an usher. But if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, you're not going to make it to heaven. Why anybody want to go to church all their life and not receive Him, I don't understand. There was a certain realization of these men, these two apostles, of having been with Jesus. I I don't know all about that. But, But you don't have to be educated and trained to have an experience of faith. It happens because you simply believe and accept the truth as presented in the scriptures. This crippled man believed and accepted. He got not only salvation by grace, but healing by faith. 
You don't have to be educated and trained to have an experience of faith. Read the Word and believe what it says. Begin to apply it to your life. Because being with Jesus makes all the difference that you need. Being with Jesus makes all the difference that you need. Try as they tried. The religious crowd could not explain away the miracle. They couldn't argue that it didn't happen. It was a, an illusion. They couldn't convince anyone that this man whom they had passed by for a long time wasn't miraculously healed. It was kind of an in-your-face experience. And they didn't like it. It's hard to argue away a miracle. And what was really hard for them is the evidence was walking right before them. You and I both know there is a certain toxicity in our government, in many parts of our government, toward our faith. There is a desire to shut down our faith. But our faith is what keeps us. Our faith is what carries us. Our faith is what will take us out of this world when Jesus comes back. We cannot give, out, give up our faith. We cannot surrender our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we cannot surrender practicing our faith in the toxic environment where we find ourselves. Our faith needs to be practiced because the world needs to be reached. Real faith has a price tag. And it isn't money. It can't be bought. It is so priceless. The cost of faith is in the dedication process. People of faith devote their lives to the study and application of the scriptures. They apply them to the way they live and conduct their lives. Christian Faith runs counter to the way the world lives. Sooner or later, that living in this world will levy a toll on those who live their lives by it. It could be simple rejection by others, unkind remarks, open criticism, or even physical harm, or death, even death. In some parts of our world, there are those who practice their faith under the threat of death. Just recently, there was the murder of two young Muslim men in a Muslim country who were Christians and practiced their faith and would not recant, would not give it up. There's a price tag. Perhaps you wonder why I'm preaching this way today. Why can't we just learn a nice lesson about Christian faith? Why can't we just go on about our business and everything just be okay? A good reason for me to preach this message today is because it's in the Bible. It's in the Word of God. But the best reason for me to preach this text today is because some of us need to examine our commitment to the faith. And we need to decide which side we want to be on. And because of these things... Of fallout, toxicity, there are consequences either way. So don't think you're getting off the hook if you reject. 
There are consequences either way. I want to tell you, in no uncertain terms, Jesus is the only way to salvation. There is no other way. Say, well, Pastor, I don't have a problem with that. I didn't say you did. Don't begin to feel guilty. There's some guilt there. You deal with that with God. But I just feel like we need to know. Faith is everything we need to get through in this world. And I'm going to tell you right now, given the landscape of what is present in our world today, don't none of us know what we will face before the end comes. I, I would like to believe that Jesus is coming back and take us away before anything drastic happens in our world, but I don't know. I do not know. And I would not tell you that. I know this, when He does come, He's going to rescue us. He's going to take us out of this old world. We may already be in the grave by then, I don't know. But we're coming out. What matters is that we are ready to go. Prayed up, paid up, looking up, expecting any moment that He's coming for me, for you. So just because things are happening in this world that is counter to our faith, things are happening in this world that threatens our faith, there's no reason for us to lose hope, no reason for us to cave, no reason for us to give up on the very thing that is saving us every day we live. It's true. It's real. It's powerful. And I can tell you from what it says that He not only heals lame people who've never walked a day in their life, He saves them too. I don't know who that man was. I do not know. But I expect to see him when I get to heaven, walking, leaping, and still praising God. I expect to join him. Amen? Doctor told me this week I needed a new hip. I said, I don't disagree. Nobody knows that better than me. But when I get to heaven, there won't be any need for whatever hip He gives me. I'm going to be walking, running, leaping, and praising God. Amen. Amen. So I want to, I want to close. Actually, I, I closed a while ago. It was in the notes where I closed, but... You know how preachers are. Sometimes they just can't shut up. <laughs> Maybe if I stood up, I'd get tired quicker. <laughs> I might fall too, and you can't pick me up, so I'm not standing up. <laughs> but what I want to leave you with this morning is this lesson in faith, that the faith that we have is more precious than any gold in this world. It is more precious than anything else. Treasure it. Hold on to it, live it, enjoy it, and by all means, share it. Share it. There's more than enough. More than enough. Our children need it, our grandchildren need it, our neighbors, our co-workers. People that we see every day who need this faith at work in their lives. They need a relationship with a man who gave his life for them and loves them and cares about them. Now I want to pray as we close this service today and ask God to be with us as we leave His house today. Father, I come in Jesus' name declaring over each one of us today healing grace from the inside out
bring healing to our hurts and pains, bring healing to our joints that ache, bring healing to our hearts that get out of whack, bring healing to our minds that begin to fade with age, Bring healing to our bones, all of them, Lord. Bring healing to our whole being, body, soul, and spirit. May the blessing of Your love so enthuse us that we feel lighter. We feel like running, walking, leaping, and praising God. Father, may Your healing grace be with each one of us, spiritually, physically, in every way. Father, I pray and ask and declare this over us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hold out your hands. And I just want to say, The Lord bless you and keep you and make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may He lift up His countenance over you. He sees you right now. And give you peace. Peace. Amen. Amen. Give Him praise with your hands. Thank you so much for being here today, and I pray God's blessing and His best upon you as you continue to serve Him today and this week. Amen. You are dismissed.